Tassi Dele. Uh, Tassi Dele means uh, good luck and good fortune and happiness. And that's how you greet people in Tibetan and um, in various things and salute them and maybe have, give toasts or something like that. Tassi Dele. And Tassi uh, Dele. And uh, uh, on February 16th, we have the new Lunar New Year, uh, which is. Um, uh, moving to the Earth Dog year, or out of these fire years that we've had, which is a very nice, peaceful, pleasant dog year. And um, it's the Tibetans in traditionally celebrated for two weeks from that Lunar New Year until the full moon on March 2nd and 3rd. Um, and they all took off from the office and they all took off from their jobs and so forth if they could. And they went to Lhasa, and they went to temples, and they prayed in the streets, and they had like, a, and they meditated, and they partied also a little bit. Although monks were, the, they took the policemen also took off from their jobs, and some head monks, uh, monk uh, monitors, uh, became like the police. So it was a spiritual law there, so they couldn't party too raucously, and. Um, they were celebrating two weeks of miracles performed by Shakyamuni, according to the texts, where he was challenged by six other teachers over a long period of time before that to a contest of miracles. And uh, because in ancient India, then if you were a great teacher or a great uh, sage, you had, had supernormal powers. I never say supernatural, I say supernormal. And um, he kept dodging these contests with these six teachers going to a number of countries, and then finally in one country, Sravasti, he, uh, in Kosambi, capital, he uh, answered the challenge, and he gave two weeks of miracles, and the six teachers kind of took a hike. They just decided no longer to challenge him. And, <clears throat> and um, so it's a time when sort of the power of goodness, the power of love, the power of wisdom, the power of enlightenment, was shown to be more dominant than the power of sort of egotism and uh, suffering and domination and all these kind of uh, miserable things about the world of based on ignorance and greed and hatred. And um, because often it seems to us, doesn't it, and very much so in, to nowadays, that the bad guys are always dominant. The good guys are kind of around and they're nice around the corner, but they're always being pushed around by the bad guys. We do have that kind of attitude and it seems realistic even to us. But um, the Buddhists have the opposite attitude, and uh, they believe that the um, good is ultimately more powerful. But because the good is peaceful and gentle, it sometimes takes time. And also, it doesn't want to just diss and destroy the bad guys. It wants to give the bad guys time to realize the error of their ways and turn towards the good even if it's in another life, in the case of a really dangerous bad guy who's taking many lives, which you might have to be uh, tough with. So, um, so, that's the, so that's what we celebrate. And since Tibet, Tibetans can't do that in an unfettered way in Tibet anymore, although now and then the communists like them to, do, to, to show off to tourists that they still have their culture, but when they're locked down, they can't really do it because they don't like to have crowds collect. They don't have freedom of assembly anywhere in China and very much not in the minority area like Tibet. And so we celebrated in New York. In, and we luckily, thanks to Philip Glass and his friends, we luckily can do it in Carnegie Hall, sort of an auspicious place. And, and we have, usually have some Tibetan artists and we have the contemporary ones. We've had David Bowie and Ray Davis, all kinds of great people over the years. And um, we have another great one coming up on March 3rd this year. And uh, we hope to see you there. And um, it's always, uh, I always have a special feeling about it when it happens. And that's especially good this coming this year because it's going to be on the full moon, which is the most powerful day. And um, the Buddha's miracles, by the way, were never just sort of arbitrary displays. They were always something that created, they were like special effects or a piece of performance art that created a special degree of inspiration and motivation on the part of his audience because he was always concerned with teaching because the greatest gift in the Buddhist view is teaching that you give because that enables the learner to become more uh, alive, more awake, more aware of their world, more capable and more happier in their world, inevitably. 
And um, so it's considered a greater gift than a gift of material things or a gift of protection. The other two major types of gift is the gift of teaching. My favorite one is where he creates a giant magical tree, like a Christmas tree. I call it the Buddhist Christmas tree. We have in our family over the years with our kids. And uh, the jewels in the tree were not like uh, bulbs, like in our Christmas tree, but actual jewels. And these jewels radiated a light, which made all the people in the huge audience of thousands of people temporarily clairvoyant with each other, so they could all hear each other's thoughts. So everyone became very attentive and concentrated on their own thoughts, not to have bad thoughts about others and um, to have really good thoughts themselves so that others would hear them thinking good things. So it was a way of getting them really alert and listening carefully to his teaching about mindfulness, concentration, wisdom, and whatever it is he taught them on that day. And there are other, other ones always had some kind of a message like that in the miracle, and then he would always give a teaching. That's what he does. Like the Dalai Lama, when he does a big uh, ritual initiation or consecration blessing, he always says, well, you guys came for the blessing, I know, and I fooled you because the blessing, really, you, I don't have a blessing, you have the blessing. And the teaching I gave you, preliminary to the blessing, is the real thing that helps you. And that's what it's really about. But you wouldn't have come to that, you only come for the blessing. But meanwhile, now you learn something. <laughs> he always says that. Ha ha, he goes, nya nya to the people, you know. And uh, so, um, but he does a big, like, color chakra or something. So that's the thing. So the great, and it's called in Tibet, the Miracle Great Prayer Festival uh, of the New Year, Lunar New Year. That's what it's called. Malam Chimo, they call it. And uh, it's not a sectarian thing. And all of Tibet would come to Lhasa who were capable on pilgrimage at that time. And it was considered really auspicious. And in the early years of that festival, when it was first founded in the year 1409, People had mass collective visions in the sky of like, like giant paintings and icons in the sky of all sorts of divine forms and uh, archetype deities and protectors and angels and what have you. you know? So, um, and some people may be still capable of that nowadays, but uh, I always feel a little something like that, but I don't, I don't have the, the gift of seeing things like that, but I feel the presence. And so please come, Carnegie Hall, March 3rd. We'll see you there. 30 years ago, someone got the idea that maybe I should give a benefit concert. And that was the first one. They've been very popular concerts. We've had people like David Bowie twice, Paul Simon a couple of times, Patti Smith many, many times. But we have this concert every year. We raise money for the concert, and, and it was that money we were able to buy this place.